You're listening to the 39th edition of the Bitochen Podcast. We're continuing in the 12th chapter of the Altar of Novartic. A person who, it's enough for that person, when it comes to his Avodah Hashem, his service of Hashem. All he cares about is fulfilling all of the superficial obligations. Even if he thinks that this is the main part of his service of Hashem. person thinks, as we've spoken about previously, that it's important, it's supernally important to be seen as someone good, to be seen as someone who's doing what's right, to be doing things that are noyach for the Brias, what, what people around them say is good. The truth is that such a person is like a blind person who's never seen any, any light in his days. Because this person, the, their conception, their concept of Taira, of Eres Hashem, service of God, is very limited. He's very, he's weighed down heavily by what people say, what people think about him. He's chained, he's shackled in his choice. doesn't realize that every single choice that he makes, every move that he does, every, every step, it's all just being guided by what the general populace does, what everyone else is doing. He's truly shackled. He never uses his power of choice. What makes us uniquely human is our ability to choose. Not just to go along, to go with the flow of what everyone else around me is doing, even if they're, what they're doing is correct. But I can't just, I can't, it can't be enough for me. I can't suffice with that. Okay. He doesn't use his his free will to choose anything new, to, to go off the beaten track at all. He can't believe that there are people who actually live on a high spiritual level, who really have bitachon, who really are l'shma, who really are tzaddikim. And they're not affected at all by the the way everyone around them thinks, the way of thinking of the general populace. Rosh Hashiva, Rabbi Per loves to tell a story, a particular person who called him asking about a shidduch, the certain family that he was familiar with, who was, they were Navartikers and Beis Yosef. And he said, who is the father? Is he a Rosh Hashiva? Is he a Magid Shir? Is he somebody who's, you know, cooking and shaking? You see, what, what does he do there in the yeshiva? What's his role? And, he said he's a, he's a Ben Tyre, he's a Ben Aliyah, he's somebody who's there, he's learning, he's studying, but he's not a Rosh Hashiva, he's not a Mashkiach, he's not something that you would, you know, find to be outstanding. So the person said, so, so then, what is he? What is, there's, not, there's nothing about him that you can say? And Rosh Hashiva said to him, you know, I'll tell you what I can say. I can tell you that he's somebody who doesn't care what other people think about him. He's somebody who will not care what you think about him. The person paused a moment and he said, you mean there really are such people? He couldn't believe it. This is somebody who doesn't care what others think about him. But that's one of the tenets, foundations of, of Navardic. In Navardic, they did things to practice being able, willing and able to do things despite what others around them would say. That's why they would walk into a bakery and ask for a box of nails. They walk into a hardware store and ask for a, a loaf of bread. Why? Because they were practicing having that inner ability, that inner fortitude to be able to do what's right no matter what everyone around is saying. And those people became incredible people. They may not have had their names in lights. Some of them did. There was this Stipler and there was Ram Yafin and there was Gershon Liebman. These are names of people who accomplished tremendous things Bigoli. But even within that, they would do things in order to, to be self-effacing, to make sure that they didn't get sold on the covet, on the honor, on the 
foolish things of caring about what other people thought about them. Famous story also, my Rosh Hashiva says about Rav Gershon Liebman. Rav Gershon Liebman was a Rosh Hashiva. He was a Talmud of Navardic. He survived the war in a concentration camp, came to France after the war, and he started over 10 institutions there called, uh, also the name Yosef, after Rabbi Yosef Yaisel Horowitz, the altar of Navardic. And uh, he would get up to speak. There was a story where he got up to speak, and this is in America, and he spoke beautifully. And after he finished speaking, he saw the island was very excited. They were very excited, and he came down from the podium, and he lied down on the floor in front of everyone. He lied down on the floor. Why did he do that? He wanted to do something unusual in order to limit the feeling of that high feeling. I did a great job. That high feeling, that desire for acknowledgement that comes, he wanted to be free of that. He wanted to be able to do what's right because it's right. Be able to give a good shmuz, the shem shemaim, the shma. The safe safe says the altar in the end, So the person who is nispal, who is, who cares about what other thing, people think about him, who, who is concerned about what's going to be in this world, doesn't have that proper bitachin, isn't doing things the shema. So what's going to be, so when he gets to the thicket, I don't know if you can see around me, but there's all kinds of thickets. It's easy to get entangled in the thicket of the questions of life. How will I this? How will I that? How will I succeed? How will it work out? So he'll end up being a person who's shanu peirash, chas v'sham. He's someone who's learned and separated himself from the Torah life, a true Torah life. Because he didn't accustom himself to the strength, the azus, the, the power of Torah. That you have to battle you have to fight for what's right. It's not enough to just coast, to do what everyone else is doing. Because comes along a little challenge, or a big challenge, and it throws him off. He's gone. He's lost, because he was just going with the flow of everyone else. When push comes to shove, he's in trouble. Because what happened at the beginning, he's already leaning away from the things that are so important, which he said again, is l'shma and bitachen doing things with pure motivation, and doing things because I have complete faith in Hashem that I'm going to be provided for my needs. He already switched out of that being important to him. And he decided that the only way is to live a life of compromise. Listen, i got to be part of everyone else. i got to be like everybody else. I can't, can't be different. I have to take care of my, you know, I've got lots of needs. I've got to make sure that all of my needs are taken care of. I have a wife, I have kids. He can't also be missing anything from his honor, his imaginary honor. I think what the people are thinking about me, I have to look good in their eyes. That kind of silly approach to life. Even though in the end, it will become clear to him that he has distanced himself from the true point of truth. The true, the Nikuda Sa'emes. Nikuda Sa'emes is a code word for looking for the absolute truth, not being, not being fooled by all of the imaginary truths that are out there, all of the things that seem to be important but aren't really important. Once he already decided to live a life of compromise, he had in mind, he's doing it in order to sanctify God's name. See, people should see a ben Torah and think, oh, this guy is clean, he's, he's neat, everything is good about him. What a great embarrassment it will be for him. Because of a small, he signed a small test that he underwent. So for that, he left the way of the Torah completely. Of the and perish, became somebody who had learned but no longer does so. Somebody who was committed, was a Ben Aliyah, was trying to grow, was trying to be great, but separated himself from it. 
He was concerned at the beginning about Kiddush Hashem, that people shouldn't see him as something different. And in the end, he loses that commitment, that deep desire to be someone great. He loses that. And he ends up being someone who is unfortunately not so great. And he loses that connection and he loses that greatness. And instead, he causes a chil Hashem. Because he's holech midar there. He gets worse and worse and he goes down. We're going to finish the 12th chapter now. Nevertheless, since he wasn't careful originally not to steer away from the path of Torah, once he has left completely the Torah, it's very hard to leave his new way of life. It's easy to leave the way of Torah. It's much harder to leave the, the salt water, the salt water, you need more, you become thirstier and thirstier and thirsty, it's never enough. The person is drawn after more and more. When, when a moment is, you know, he'll have a moment of clarity. Oh, where am I? He wants to come back. It'll be very difficult. I remember one time, I was learning in Yeshiva, in Yeshiva for Akwe. This goes back over 20 years. And there was a guy who had gone out to college. And he did college full-time. He didn't, he didn't come to learn. He had been learning before, and then he went to college. And one time he comes back to the Yeshiva, and he says, I'm so sick of that life. I'm so sick of being involved in Gashmias and physicality all, all the time. He said, I have to be here in the Yeshiva. And he came. He was around for a few days. And then he was gone. Once a person has decided that he cares about what other people think about him, that he's concerned and that he's got to do things that look good for others, he puts himself in a place of spiritual danger, in a place where it's common to sin. Even if there'll be a flash of awareness, a flash of, oh my, what am I doing? But, this kind of person, if he doesn't nip it in the bud, he doesn't get it right at the beginning. So his whole life will be filled with these thoughts of charot, of, of regret, right? Because I'll tell us that the Russia, the wicked person, his life is full of regrets. Because he never gained control of himself. He's always addicted to high motivational, big hit, feeling something. In order for me to do it, i got to feel something great. He never got accustomed to doing things that have low motivation. Lishma, Lishma, Bitachin. If I do it myself, if I make all, if I pull out all the stops, we're going to make it happen. It's gonna, we're going to make it happen. That feeling of me needing to do it. And it might even be that I make a lot of money that way. That feeling of me needing to do it is that big hit. And he's, the, the altar is telling us we got to steer away from that kind of need, that kind of feeling of being accepted by everybody, and, and having all of our needs met. Having all of our needs met as we think they need to be, perhaps. Because who will provide us with all of our real needs. The obligation is very great upon a person who truly seeks Hashem. A person needs to be careful from the beginning, not to allow himself to be caught in the thicket of this, this foolish thing. As we started this piece, speaking about, in this chapter, speaking about how the Yetzirah, the, the evil incarnation, the Malach of Esav, the angel who fought with Yaakov, so he got him on his side, he got him on his, on his support. And this is our support, the support that, the true support is Bitachan, is Lishma. These things support us. Having full faith in Hashem, knowing that He's going to provide us with our needs without needing, for our, needing to be the one who does it. I'm so worried about how am I going to get my needs. Being so concerned about uh, how do people see me. All of the Master Atzmei Torah. person needs to give himself over completely to Torah. Throw off the yoke of all of the many cheshbonis, all the calculations, 
all of the things that I think that I need. By doing so, by giving myself over completely to Torah, by having full bitachon, forgetting about what other people think, having real shma, that's how I become the Holy of Holies. And this is the Lashon of the Rambam, which he's quoting. And Hashem will be his portion and his inheritance forever. Once again, I want to invite you and encourage you to join us, Bitachon Group, Bitachon Group at gmail.com or my email, arigoldwag at gmail.com. Be part of a group of people trying to become greater, Vaksha Hashem, trying to search out what does it mean to have real Bitachon, what does it mean to serve Hashem properly, what does it mean to do things Lashma. Thanks so much for listening. See you again next time.